Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I am a fifth year teacher that is back in first grade in a new school. Today we're talking about math, what I do for my math block and how I orchestrate and plan for my math centers. So if you watched my ELA centers, my literacy centers video, um, it'll be very similar to how I do my math centers, but today I'm gonna talk about my whole math block, not just the centers portion. So I do math in the morning. I've always done math in the morning, but it just so happened that my schedule was made for me this year and my math block was right before recess. So I was very happy about that because I just feel like kids need to be sharp and ready to go during math. So I have a 70 minute block in the morning for math. It's about 10, 10 to 11, 20. The first 20 minutes of my math block is dedicated to a whole group lesson. So we'll spend about five minutes on a math warm up. They will be doing this at their seat with their whiteboards. I will show you what I use for their math warmups. They're from education to the core and they're great because they're already pre-made. This is what they look like. I have them for the whole year and typically we only do one. So I'll just put like a box over the other side of it and just use one of these a day. Also, quick little plug, if you are a first grade teacher and you want to do math warmups or you're looking for a resource, I created this and I put it in my TPT. I have 180 different math slides to use for first grade warmups in math. And if you don't want to pay for it, you can check my teacher drive if you're already a part of that because they're in there as well. After the math warm up, I have them do a partner problem solve and I have lips and ears. I will show you guys those just to kind of orchestrate and um, help them with their turn and talking. I put these on TPT. I think they're like a dollar. So one kid has the lips, one kid's at the ears and they discuss the problem together. One person, you know, gives a suggestion or solution or tries to solve the problem and then they switch. Um, we won't use them all year, but at least the beginning of the year kind of helps them remember whose turn it is because we don't want them just one talking over each other and two, I don't want one kid solving the problem and the other one just copying. After they have done their math warm up and their activator, which is like they're doing their partner work together, um, we review that as a whole class. They'll come to the rug and we'll typically do a whole group lesson and I have slides for that. Sometimes I will utilize the iReady interactive tutorial videos because they usually have like one great one per lesson. So I'll do that maybe on like a Monday. I will use Jack Hartman videos. I will teach them new songs for math or we will act things out. That's probably their favorite is to like act out a problem. This week we were doing fact family. So I had like 10 kids come up to the rug, two are grownups, eight are kids. And we talked about how you can mix and match the family to make 10. And that will take us up to 10.30 because I do about 20 minutes of all those activities. Then from 10.30 to 11 is centers. And centers are the best. The kids like doing centers. Um, and I have four and we typically do two a day. And I have four groups, so it works out because I see kids twice a week. By Thursday, I've seen each group twice. And then on Friday, that's usually when the math quiz falls. Um, I'll see every group so that I can um, give them the assessment in small groups. If my two highest groups are, or I should say, my two on grade level groups have got it mastered by Thursday or the day before, whenever we're supposed to give the quiz, I will give it to them in small groups during their instructional time versus um, taking four groups on a Friday because sometimes four groups on a Friday is insane. But here are my four groups that I break it into. I have M-A-T-H, M stands for Meet the Teacher, A stands for At My Seat, T stands for Technology or you could say Tablets, and H is Hands On. Um, a At My Seat job is usually an independent practice and H Hands On is usually a fact fluency skill. So if you figured that out, the M-A-T-H stands for math. So it's kind of cool. I don't teach the kids that, but it's just great for my brain to kind of figure out and make sure that I'm getting all my ducks in a row and hitting all the standards. So like I said, I do two centers a day, about 15 minutes each because I have a 30 minute block for centers and I have four groups. So I see two groups a day and I have around four to five kids in each of my groups very similar to my literacy groups. Just to break down each center, so meet the teacher. I have them come to my teacher table back there. We're typically working on the learning target for that week or um, the standard that we're working on. And I will have them usually do some sort of warm up with me. So I have these math folders that I created, which I will show you next. They're just folders with dry erase pockets in them and they just have number bonds, hundreds chart, number lines, tens frames, and I have markers over at my teacher table and we'll do some sort of warm up where we're doing some sort of skill using one of those materials or using counters or things like that just to practice a skill to kind of warm our brains up. And then I'll spend like the rest of the 10 minutes either using the math I ready workbooks that we have purchased through my school or I will do something else that I see that that group's struggling with. Like I'll use the last math quiz to kind of and for my instruction, iReady is great because they have all these different lesson plans built into the program. So I can just print off lessons straight from the curriculum right online and pull those and use those for my small groups. 
So for math, I'm really not having to plan that much for my small groups, which is lovely. And I do those small groups because my kids who are on grade level and my kids that are not on grade level need different things. So it's a great opportunity for me to check in with them, see them in that small group setting and see what they really need to work on before we take the quiz. The next center at my seat is independent practice. So we as a team print that out. So another coworker of mine is in charge of printing out the math materials. And so I will kind of delegate from what she prints and gives to us what each group can be working on. So they are leveled in the sense that my on grade level kids are working on one independent practice and my kids that are not on grade level are working on something else. Typically the first day of my math rotation, so on a Monday, my not yet grade level kids will be working on a review skill until I've had them at the teacher table to teach them the new skill. And then later in the week, they will be doing their independent practice um, on the on grade level skill. And then my grade level kids, so my two higher groups, they work on the standard that we're teaching all week because they don't need the review skill usually. Sometimes they'll have to throw it in because I need something, uh, but typically they're doing whatever we're doing whole group. Okay, next up in the acronym is T, and I say it's technology because they use their Chromebooks for iReady Math. Um, but if you only have like iPads, you could do Tablet Time um, if you want to teach your kids the acronym. And essentially, that station is pretty self explanatory. They just go in their pathway on iReady and work on that until the station is up. At my new school, we don't have a time requirement or like a minutes requirement. So I have my kids work on it for about 30 minutes a week at most. But, um, sometimes up to 45 minutes. And then sometimes if it's a short week or things like that, they only do like 15 minutes. But um, at my last school, we had to do 45 minutes a week for each kid and that was really hard to do. And then the last station is hands-on, or for me, I call it their fact fluency station. So with hands-on, something with manipulatives, um, I have Jenga addition and subtraction, I have cup stack, we have um, these little clothes pins and popsicle sticks where they're clipping addition facts to the right answer. I have dice centers, I have counting bear centers, I have domino centers. So it's something hands-on where they're using probably like a manipulative or something tangible that's just not a worksheet. And I will show you some examples of that. So I keep most of that stuff over here. So like cup stack, I've got these fact rings that I got from a yard sale once. I have fact flyers where they're using um, timers to time themselves. We've got addition and subtraction Jenga. I've got these fun pop-it board games that I haven't brought out yet. I have different board games for using dice or for dominoes. I keep most of that down here on these shelves with all my manipulatives. Those are all mostly things that I have made. And then I also have a lot of fun games for math down here and things that I've printed out in these bins as well. So I'll interchange these from time to time. If um, a game is tricky or the directions are confusing, I might introduce the game at our teacher table time or small group time first. It'll be a fact fluency choice for them the week after. So really quick, I'm just gonna tell you what we do after centers and then I'll show you the drawers themselves. After centers, it's 11 o'clock and we have until 11.20 for recess. So they all go on ST math or GG as they call it, which is the penguin. And I'm new to ST math this year, but I'm learning that it's essentially a non word oriented puzzle solving math platform. It's really cool. So basically there's no language attached to it. They are just looking at puzzles and problem solving and trying to solve the puzzles. And throughout the year, they get more and more challenging and they count how many puzzles the kids can do. It tracks their minutes and it tracks their percentage. So I will show you our bulletin board where we use to track our percentage. So they use this on their Chromebooks. And every time I see that they've moved up 5%, I will move their penguin. And then I show where our whole class is as an average. So we're at like 14% right now uh, because we've got anywhere from 2% to 30% finished. And the goal is that they'll get to 80% by the end of the year. So we need to catch up real bad. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys what is actually in the drawers. I need to fill my drawers for next week because today is Friday. So we're gonna fill them together and I'll show you how the drawers operate. So here are the drawers. The bottom two don't have any labels on them because I use this as fast finishers choices. So if the kids finish their math station early, like if they finish their at their seat job early, because sometimes it'll only take them a few minutes out of the 15, then this week's choices were to come do a subtraction color by number or to do a write the room where they were trying to find the math problems. So those are choices for anybody and they know that they can always work on Gigi if they finish their station early as well. The rest of the drawers are all labeled. It's either fact fluency, which is this little girl holding the fact, or it is at their seat job, which is the little boy at his seat. And I have it split. So my red circles and my orange squares are working on different things than my yellow triangles and my green rectangles. And I have two drawers for each because I have them work on this on Monday and Tuesday and then this on Wednesday and Thursday. And then by Friday, I might have to switch it out if we had a full week. 
So now it's time to fill the drawers for next week. Um, something I talked about in my literacy center video is that I use these for directions. So I also have to change the directions on the buttons. Pick a domino and write a fact family. Draw the dots on the domino and then write two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences. Make sure your sentence makes sense. So I use those for directions. So I'm gonna pull all those out empty out the extra paper from this week and fill our drawers. So next week is kind of nice because we only have two days of centers because next week is Thanksgiving. So we only have Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday's a half day. So I only need to put in one piece of paper for each group and one fact fluency choice for each group. All right, here's what we have for next week for fact fluency. I got these new um, self-checking puzzles for matching numbers up to 30 for my red circles in orange squares. And then for yellow triangles and green rectangles. They're going to be doing a roll and add where they find the two parts and then write the whole with their expo marker for at their seat job for the red circles and orange squares. Just for review, they're gonna practice part, part, whole to five and cut out the bats to match the number at the top. And for yellow triangles and green rectangles, they're gonna find the missing number, cut the picture and glue it on top so that it can make a cool design. The last step to get ready for those math centers is just to add the directions to the buttons. Anyways, that is how my math centers operate and that is how my math block comes to fruition. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, but hopefully that was a good picture of what we do every day in first grade math. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.